So uh, my name is Chip Pasek. I'm co-founder and CEO of 2U. So what is 2U? Uh, well, 2U partners with some of the best institutions, primarily in the United States, but the reason you'll see us here more in Europe is we're getting close with a couple of great European institutions. So what do we provide? 2U provides a platform. We like to think of it with a capital P. So it's a combination of code, a bunch of great proprietary technology, and tech-enabled services to help a great university scale its brand on a worldwide basis without sacrificing quality. So to be a little bit bold, we're genuinely starting to believe that at the graduate level, not undergraduate, but at the graduate level, this form of higher education, you can make an argument, is actually better than the campus program. What's our approach? We like to think of it as no back row, so forgive those in the back row. But we all know the back row, the seats closest to the exits, a refuge for minds that wander, a home of the unraised hand. What if you could eliminate that back row and bring every student forward? Well, the technology we provide allows our great institutions to do exactly that, powering weekly live intimate classes with great faculty from Berkeley or Georgetown or Yale. So these are not 2U degrees. These are the real degrees, the sort of real thing that students enroll in, becoming a full member of that university community. And it's working pretty well. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the business and our approach, but just a level set on the scale. 2U recently passed $1.2 billion US uh, in total tuition generated for our university partners. So it's getting quite big. Now, I really do believe that we're building, in some ways, a premier education platform for the 21st century. The tough part of this, and really what I'm here to talk about today, this notion of channeling the best of both worlds, is what we've done is effectively bolted on a technology startup to institutions that are older than anything in our culture overall. So you're talking about channeling the best of both worlds. So that's Van Halen, for those that don't know. Uh, and this idea of channeling the best of both worlds came from really this premise about 2U and how we actually handle that bolt-on. How does that work? How do you work with an institution that might have been around for 200 years as an eight-year-old technology company? So sure, we've done well, but we have nowhere near the history nor the legacy of the institutions we work with. So let me level set a little bit about our university partners overall. So this screenshot here is all of the 2U university partners, or not all of them, many of them, compared to great brands in the world. So let's talk about the word brand first, which at times can be a dirty word in higher education. In our opinion, it shouldn't be. Brand is not about marketing. Brand is about relationships. The best brands in the world that you all experience every day have a relationship with a consumer. And universities are no different, but very different in some pretty profound ways. So notice, this would be much more pronounced if I was here in Europe. You're talking about one of my university partners is 75 years older than America. Yale was formed 75 years before my country was founded. Your institutions go back even further. What's pretty remarkable about that is you don't find institutions like that anywhere in our culture. And so we think there's a tremendous amount of respect there. They're pretty incredible places. So taking sort of a deeper look, this is my youngest university partner in terms of age. It's a great institution in the state of Texas called Southern Methodist University. They're 12 years older than Walt Disney, which maybe is one of the best American brands. Let's talk about a different brand, Coca-Cola. So Coca-Cola was founded in 1886. Some people say that Coke is the second best known English language word in the world. Hello, and then Coke. One of certainly the best brands in the world. You could argue a top five brand. Coca-Cola was founded in 1886. Two universities, two U partners with, Georgetown and Chapel Hill, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, were founded in 1789. They have 100 years on Coca-Cola. And more importantly, people don't go get married at the Coke factory. People form a relationship with Georgetown that lasts a lifetime. These are deeply rich institutions. And when I say rich, I don't mean dollars. I mean culture, passion. So in talking about higher education, I get pretty passionate. Um, I went to George Washington University, and while we serve in, in a 2 use business model, we serve the elite universities, I don't say that as an elitist. So I'm a first generation college graduate. George Washington completely changed my life in every possible way. I grew up in Miami, Florida. I'd never seen snow when I got to Washington, D.C. I met my, my wife there, we're still together 25 years later. 
my current general counsel that I IPO'd the company with, I bought my first winter coat of my life with Todd Glassman. I met people that literally changed my world. So this is a younger version of me at graduation, forgive the beverage. Uh, incredible day for me, incredible experience. The power of the degree is very real. Today it is the single best tool of social mobility ever invented. So I don't believe great universities deserve the scorn that you often hear. I actually believe the opposite. They deserve quite a bit of praise. Do they struggle? Sure. Are some of them maybe a little broken? Absolutely. But I really believe 2U's success comes from an understanding of their culture and how to bring out the best of both worlds. So let's talk about that a little deeper. Now I love startups. My entire career has been startups. I mentioned earlier, I started a company right out of college. We produced a television show in America. And while the show did very well and launched a bunch of famous people's careers, the business never did. But why do I start there? That experience formed me as a person. It formed me as an entrepreneur. I couldn't treasure it more. So I love the energy in this startup environment. It really is part of my blood. Now this particular one has worked really well. But it's worked well because I believe a unique understanding of what's happening at the higher ed level. So let's talk about the word change. The notion of change in higher ed. Disruption, disruption, disruption. Everyone has to be disrupted. So clearly change must occur in this market long term for universities to succeed. And I'm very proud of what 2U is doing. But the question of change is the, a great provost that 2U has once told me in higher ed, the story of change in higher ed is the story of the turtle being mugged by two snails. Someone asked the turtle what happened and he said, I don't know, it all happened so fast. So while that's funny, the important thing about change is we don't believe it means that there's a fear of change. So while they are slow, when you think about what's happening at a great university, once again, that's existed for hundreds of years, we don't believe it's a fear of change. We believe it's a fear of loss. These schools have been doing something incredibly well that had the kind of impact on my personal life that is very palpable. I'm a good example of it. Many of you in the room, I'm sure, are in your own personal stories. They've done something so well for a really long time. So that fear of identity loss, that necessary change that has to occur, would you as an individual want to hear every day that you personally have to be disrupted? No, you wouldn't. So the question is, how does it work? My experience is you don't get to a great institution of higher education unless you're really smart. The vast majority of the faculty will jump on a path if you identify it for them and you take them through it carefully and thoughtfully. Give them a chance to breathe, give them a chance to adapt. Why? You're asking for fundamental DNA change by working with your technology company. So don't belittle them in any way. The reality is their pain points are your pain points. So the second insight from our eight year journey is ultimately, does technology rule the world? Well, I love my tech dev team. I'm super proud of the code that's involved at 2U. And I do believe that technology can unleash the university in a pretty profound way, but not without people. The reality is every single great education experience that you've ever had in your life is about being part of something bigger, not just learning an individual skill. What makes that go round? Great faculty. The reality is you need great faculty be, to be successful in a digital environment. What's unique about higher education is it's born of the word faculty governance. Now faculty governance means some tricky things. There's no single decision maker. So for an ed tech company that can be maddening. But it doesn't make them archaic. It's actually part of, sure, at times what makes it frustrating, but also what makes it unbelievably powerful. You're talking about an institution that has freedom of thought that has allowed it to exist for hundreds of years. That's really unique. So I believe if you capture the power of those individual people, you can capture institutional will, which means you can really come down to changing the world. So what else have we learned? Ultimately, keep your promises. Once again, these are incredibly smart faculty. Don't overpromise and underdeliver. Transparency wins in higher education. We do our best to level set with every school that we launch to ultimately drive the right outcome. And in getting there, faculty absolutely hold your feet to the fire. So we've learned in some ways the hard way that you ultimately have to over deliver 
not underdeliver. You don't become a faculty member at one of these great schools unless you are really smart. So ultimately, my advice to the technology startups is be careful with your promises because they will hold you to them, and they should. Play long ball. Sounds kind of obvious, right? But in the day-to-day -day grind of a startup, which I can totally relate to, so now to you seems pretty obvious. Wow, we IPO'd, isn't that great? Well, in 2008, my CFO paid two payrolls out of his checking account. I will always be blessed to have worked with him. I did not have the capital personally to do that. He did. The reality is startups are hard, and you're stuck in the day-to-day, -day, which is both what makes it compelling, but also what makes it really difficult. Universities, once again, have been around for centuries. You have to play long ball to play with the university properly. I actually believe this is a place where we've gotten quite capable. So why? So every 2U program that we launch is a $10 million net negative cash investment over the first four years of that program's life from 2U. So we're investing $10 million US into that degree program over the first four years before it turns to cash flow break even. What does that make me? We are not a vendor. We don't consider ourselves a vendor. We consider ourselves a partner with a long-term revenue share over a decade-long agreement with an institution. But these are not my degrees. These are their degrees, their students, their faculty, and their universities. So it's important to truly focus on the forest, not the trees. It's OK to be the subservient partner. It's OK to play long ball. You're not going to win every single discussion with a group of faculty at a particular school that has 200 really important faculty members. But if you focus on the long term and you once again deliver on your promises, we really do believe that you can get past all the short-term obstacles. This might be the most important one for me in terms of uh, lessons learned about 2U, is with wisdom comes what? The reality is startups bring a ton to the table. Ideas, inspiration, drive, verve, and of course, a lot of code, a lot of magic. Our university partners are old. Old is not a pejorative term. The fact is, they are wise. I don't believe that that just applies to people. I do believe it applies to institutions. So ultimately, do you respect them blindly? Of course not. But you really should respect them. If you look, maybe there's some flaws, right, that we have to work through as really a society. But ultimately, I believe that they are an incredibly smart group of people that when embraced the right way, you can win them over. Over time, there's no doubt about it. So R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Now, this might sound like a pain. So why focus on higher education? Right? Why bother? Well, a couple things. First of all, it is a massive market undergoing real transformation. At our IPO, the bankers actually had a difficult time coming up with an exact number for how large higher education is as a market. In the US, it's clearly 550 billion or more. Worldwide, you're talking about in the trillions. So that's an entrepreneur's dream. To quote another Van Halen song, dreams, that's what the world is made of. So uh, you're talking about trillions, people. This is a massive market. So is it worth it? Of course. Well, another fact, interesting thing about higher ed is it's very sticky. Why? The same thing that makes it difficult to penetrate does ultimately make it easier to stay longer if you deliver. Faculty governance, institutional will, that freedom of thought, that no single decision maker, I believe makes it possible to build a defensive moat around a business in a way that might be harder in markets that are immediately more flexible. So we believe that ultimately higher education is well worth it. But let's step back a moment and get a little more philosophical. So I've, um, over the years, become quite friendly with a gentleman named Steve Case, who is the founder of America Online. He's also based in Washington, DC, which is where I am. And he recently spoke at our 2U partner meeting. And he quoted this African proverb. And I just love it. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. The reality is you can become a part of a broader story that is changing people's lives in a way that you just can't find. I mean, that gets me up in the morning. These are brilliant communities, and they're powerful. 
So by working together with a great institution, I believe you can create something lasting that has a profound impact on individuals. You can be part of this notion of the reimagination of one of the most important sectors of the worldwide economy. That's no small thing. So sure, you can become financially successful, but more importantly, you can actually create something that changes the world. And I believe that's ultimately what drives the passion of an individual entrepreneur and most of the people that are involved in education technology in particular. Like that's every business I've ever run was an education technology business. That's really ultimately what gets me up in the morning. So your technology and your ideas are critical. You have what it takes, but the reality is the other side, that best of both worlds, is equally important. One could argue more important. That social mobility provided from those great universities is real. So if you're, a uni, if you're a uni in the audience, if you're a university in the audience, what is my advice for you? Most of this talk was targeted at people like me, the education technology entrepreneur. But what about the universities? Well, here I go back to Van Halen. There's a great Van Halen song called Unchained. The reality is embrace the technology. Unchained, nothing stays the same. It won't stay the same. I think we can make an argument that in 20 years, at the graduate level, the campus programs will exist, but they will be luxury goods. This form of online education is real, it works, and it's powerful. And many of the ideas out there in that hall will change the world for the better. So my advice to the universities is to channel my good friend David Lee Roth and jump. Now, I hope at least the Europeans know that song. I was a little worried about the Van Halen thing, although I was told that they are on a European tour right now. So that was maybe made a little bit more. So that's David Lee Roth, and my argument to you, the great universities, is to really jump in. Go all in. Innovation creates opportunity, and together, working with great entrepreneurs, you can truly create something special. And with that, I am now open to receive your question. So we can do a Q&A. Any questions from the room? Uh, so some of the, the, the best experiences uh, in any learning environment come about through spontaneous interactions, and I think your own experience is a test of that. So I'm just curious how you foster that through an online uh, learning community. So once again, I didn't show too much of the 2U special sauce, but these weekly live classes are incredible. You're talking about you know, an average class size across our portfolio of 11.3. Super small, intimate, live classes with a great faculty member from Berkeley in data science who might be sitting in Mumbai. And then what's also quite unique is all of our programs involve some sort of physical component. So students get together. The, the, the shot that I showed you earlier in the presentation with that large group of students was actually what Chapel Hill calls an immersion. And 500 students got together on campus. And those immersions have traveled. So they go from Mumbai to, to London to Singapore. The fourth quarter is always in Chapel Hill. Why? People want to go to what's called the Dean Dome and go to a Tar Heel basketball game. And so uh, when we started the company, that was their innovation, not ours. We were a little terrified of that notion because we thought they were removing the one thing that made the great selling proposition. You know, maybe, maybe that goes away if you tell people they have to come. And what's been fascinating is they're so popular that they had to actually increase the number that students could take for credit, which means not only are student pay, students paying the travel, but they're actually paying that per credit fee. So wildly popular. So that was a big lesson learned for us. You combine those two things, and we actually think it does make for a very sort of real connection. We've got one great story where a student in California is now getting married to a student in North Carolina, and they met on the platform. I believe that means I'm getting the hook. Thank you, everybody.